Trevor Jones, bringing you the national and international news. The situation across the nation is deteriorating rapidly. Large sections of the country are with no running water. There are shortages of food and fuel, and most people have no electrical power. Many stores are closed, and we have reports from several large cities of armed gangs roaming the streets looking for water, food, fuel, and anything else of value. There have been riots in many of the major cities across the world. This crisis appears to have created a total breakdown of social order across the globe. How did all of this happen? How did we get to the point of total collapse of order across all of the major nations on this planet? Let me walk you through our sad story and unraveling of life as we knew it. My name is Jeff and I live in a beautiful and comfortable home with my wife Diane. Things seem to be so good. We truly lived a good life. We had a beautiful backyard. We both had good jobs. We bought late model cars, ate out regularly, traveled regularly, and took tropical vacations almost every year. This was a time of great abundance and happiness, and we were so caught up with this life that we were blissfully unaware of the pressures that were building in the U.S. and world economies. Some of the warning signs we missed of the underlying rot in our system included the loss of the nation's manufacturing sector to offshoring, the stock market crash, the massive Wall Street bailouts, the continued growth of the too big to fail banks, the casino gambling environment that replaced true investment in the nation, the doctoring of unemployment numbers by the government, the growth of payday lenders, the increasing numbers of people using food pantries to feed their families, the growing numbers of stores on the edge of almost giving away their inventories, the increasing number of vacant commercial properties, and the millions of people who were losing their homes to foreclosure while the bankers paid themselves huge bonuses. The obvious corruption of our politicians by corporate campaign spending. The decline of our inner cities. The bleeding of our economy through endless wars. The consistent trade deficits brought on by our profligate use of imported oil. The growth of our prison population until we had more prisoners than any other nation on the planet. The rapid growth of the homeless. During this time, we had the most massive redistribution of wealth from the middle classes to the rich. Our public schools were deteriorating, while the wealthy lived in their gated communities and sent their children to elite private schools. How could I have missed so many warning signs? These symptoms were there in plain sight for all to see, yet collectively we all continued living an illusion that the current system was sustainable and that our government had solved economic problems and that things would get better. Should we be surprised that our friends and neighbors lost their jobs while we actively seek to buy the cheapest foreign-made products rather than those made in the USA? Well, reality finally hit home. While driving home from work, I stopped to get gas for the car. It seemed like the line was moving unusually slowly. It turns out that the gas station was no longer accepting credit cards and would only sell gas for cash. I tried another station, but it was not selling any gas. As I continued on my way home, I noticed that even another gas station was closed. When I got home, a telephone call came in from my sister and told my wife Diane to look on the news. The channels were all carrying only one story on how the dollar was collapsing on the world markets and all financial transactions had come to a standstill. Apparently, a sovereign debt crisis caused by several countries created the panic which had spread to the United States. And then to compound this problem, thousands of billions in derivatives held by the four largest banks in the U.S. failed 
because there was simply too much money for any counterparty to pay out. The price of gold was increasing steadily. How could I have ever believed that our nation could pay off $12,000 billion in debt? This amount of money simply boggles my mind now. A neighbor visits us and warns us that a run is taking place at the supermarket. When we arrive at the store, it is totally mobbed and the store will not accept credit cards and will only accept cash. The shelves in the store are emptying quickly. The news tells us that some banks are closed. Others have withdrawal limits of $200. There are increasing food and fuel shortages. Many stores have now closed, and those that are open are out of canned goods, batteries, fuel, and other staples. The stock market has been in free fall for three full days, and it was closed early today to provide some breathing room. Gun stores are reporting huge sales and are almost out of ammunition and firearms. Some gun stores are no longer accepting cash and will only accept gold or silver for payment. I am starting to get really worried that things are unraveling far too quickly. The news was now telling us about panic in several cities in the US, Asia, and Europe. The stock market continues to drop and is closed again today after only one hour of trading. The president is leaving the country with his entire economic team and the chairman of the Federal Reserve to go to China for an economic summit. I find it interesting that the influence of China has grown because of their vast currency reserves and that they are hosting the summit and not the U.S. The government has declared a bank holiday and all the banks are now closed. No one can get to their money or safe deposit boxes. We are starting to run short of food. My brother has temporarily moved in with us and brought some food with him. My wife's mother has also moved in with us. The news tells us that the food distribution network is barely functioning and that many pension funds have failed. Most stores are now closed and it looks like no one is going to work. I was on the commuter rail line and these stations that are normally filled with people going to work to the city were eerily empty and it leaves me feeling very unsettled. There are fewer and fewer cars on the road now because it seems like most gas stations are closed and fuel is very difficult to find. 